Hey everybody, it's Zephyr here with another video tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a sidechain compression in FL Studio. Now, a lot of you guys probably aren't going to be familiar with what this means, uh, but you've probably heard it at some point in some sort of trance or techno song. So, before we get started, I'm going to show you a quick example of what sidechain compression is and what it sounds like, so that you know what you're getting into. Okay. So I have loaded up just a quick pad synth and a kick drum that'll be looping through. It's not supposed to sound good or anything, it's just for an example. And uh, first I'm going to play it without any sidechain compression, and then I'm going to go back and play it with some sidechain compression so you can hear the difference. So here it is without it. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on the sidechain compression and you should be able to hear the pad pumping in and out with the kick drum. Okay, so if you were watching there, you could see this volume knob jumping up and down with the kick drum. That's what I'm going to show you how to do. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to set up that sidechain compression inside FL Studio. I'm starting with a, a pretty much blank template here. I have my kick drum with my pad that you heard earlier, but there's no routing. They're all just going right through the master. Okay, so first thing that you're going to want to do is send them all to their own effects channel. So I'm going to route my synth to channel 1, and I have two kick drums here, I just layered them, get a bit of a fuller sound. I'm going to send those to number 2. If you like, you can, you know, rename them, so you know what's going on. Okay, so now what you want to do is we're going to load up a ch uh, an effect onto the kick channel. It's called the peak controller, the fruity peak controller. So find that in your list. There we go. Okay, so when you have that loaded up, you'll see this panel pop up. Now when you hit play, you'll notice uh, the kick drum isn't making any noise. But you can see this moving up and down. Well, when you load this up by default, it has mute turned on in the corner. We still want to hear our kick drum, so we're going to unmute that. Okay, so now, when you hit play, you can see the kick drum is coming through here with these peaks. And what the Fruity Peak Controller does is it reads those peaks, and you can use it to automate things. So, what we're going to want to do is automate the volume of our pad to go down when the peak goes up. So we're going to right click on the pad volume fader here and choose link to controller. Okay, so I pick link to controller and the remote control settings pops up. Okay, so we're not going to worry about this. We're not connecting it to a MIDI controller. We want an internal controller. So if you click on this box here, it should give you the option peak control kick, which is peak plus LFO, or peak, or just LFO. Well, we only want the peak, we're not mixing anything else in there, so we're going to choose peak control kick peak. Okay, so now when the peak goes up, you'll see that our uh, volume goes up when I hit play here. Now, that's not what we want. We actually want the opposite. So, we're going to go back into our link to controller box, and instead of having input, we're going to click on this mapping formula box, and you want to pick inverted. So now, instead of going up, it'll go down when the kick sounds. So, go and hit accept on that, and we'll hear what that sounds like. Okay, well, we're almost there, but there's a few other things that we can uh, clean up here. You'll notice that when the kick comes through, at its current volume, 
it's not moving this bar up all the way. So, you know, we're not getting the volume to go all the way down either. Which, in some cases, can be good, depending on the effect that you want. But sometimes you want it to totally mute out the pad when the kick is sounding. So, on your Fruity Poot controller here, you can see there's a knob that says Volume on it. Now, that's not going to change the volume of the kick drum itself. It's going to change the volume of the signal. So, it'll send more signal, but it won't change what you're hearing, except for what's being automated. So, uh, I'm going to mute the, the uh, channel here, so you won't hear it, but you can see what's going to happen here. So, the kick is coming through, and you can see that it's only putting up that bar just a little tiny bit. So, I'm going to take this volume knob on the peak part, and turn that up. And you can see now it's going up all the way. And this is being uh, turned down a lot more. So we can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so now it's cutting it out mostly all the way. But there's a few other things you might want to mess with on here too. Uh, we have a few other settings. We have a bass setting on the left here. And what that does is it adds a bass value. Uh, to the bottom of the peak, which will affect where it automates from. So now it'll only go up from here, but you can see that that's affecting over here. So that's actually quite handy if you want to leave it at a set volume when it's on, before it was going all the way to the top, and that can mess with some mastering and stuff. So I'm going to turn that up, so this is pretty much equal with the rest. And then we'll move on. We already covered volume. Here's tension, and what tension does is it will uh, change how fast it will move up and down or you know some things like that uh, I can show you what that sounds like here too I'm gonna start playing and then adjust the tension knob So if you want to, you can have it cut out a lot more smoothly, or a little choppier, depending on what you like. And the last one here is the decay knob. Now that'll decide how fast this bar will go back down after it reaches a peak. So if you want to, you can have a little bit smoother of a fading effect when the pad is fading in. So we can mess with that a little bit too here. <laughs> So you can see, when I turned the decay to the left, that was adding more decay, and it would take too long for the peak to go down, so it would just stay muted all the time. So you're going to want to, you know, adjust them moderately. You don't want a little, you don't want too much of any one thing. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about how to do some sidechain compression, and I hope you go and try it out and fool around, see what kind of new sounds you can come up with. Uh, if you're interested in FL Studio or any other ImageLine products, I can get you 10% off with the link in the comments. And uh, enjoy making music.